the next level. Hallelujah. Come on, just say it with me. The next level. The next level. Hallelujah. The next level. Mm. Hallelujah. You see, God requires us to constantly be going to the next level. In fact, it is annoying to God when we are stagnant. The Bible tells us that every branch that is what? Unfruitful. He cuts it off and throws it into the fire. So God requires for us to go to the next level. And thus the scriptures tell us that we go from what? Glory to glory. So God requires constant improvement. When I still worked in the corporate world, there was always performance. There was, uh, they used to call them what? Performance, was it analysis? No. Performance management. At a certain point in the year, they sit you down with your manager and they go through all these things. And they're seeing your performance. And how you scored determined how you get promoted, your pay raise and everything else. And if you consistently scored badly, you were in trouble. You were in danger of losing your job. And God, too, he is constantly evaluating us. The Bible says he's what? Jesus said, I am the vine, and my father is what? The husband man. He prunes, he cuts, he does all the necessary things. God does performance analysis on us to see where are we. So the next level, it is important for us to learn how to go to the next level. It's one thing to go walking around, the next level, the next level, and you're talking about it all the time, but how do you get there? What are the principles for getting to the next level? How? You know, in companies, we know how you get promoted. You put in some extra work, you'd be a bit innovative. You, there's things you do in order to get a promotion. In the kingdom of God, there are things you do in order to qualify for a promotion. It's not automatic. It's not about time in grade. You know, in some companies, one of the companies I worked with, promotion was based on seniority. So it was about how long you'd spent in the company. You could not get promoted over someone who had come before you. It was very demoralizing. There was no reason for the rest of us to work any harder than the person who, who has been there longer than us. After all, they'll still get promoted ahead of us anyway. In God's kingdom, it's not like that. In Uganda, we have this system called universal primary education. The government pays for primary education for everyone. Now, the problem with that is if the government is paying, they don't want to pay for someone who stayed in the same class over and over and over. So there is a policy that if someone repeats uh, too many times, just promote them anyway. Push them on in the system. That's not how it works with God. You must pass the exam in order to be promoted. One of the things that, I'm, that amuses me is the story of Jonah. God tells Jonah, go to Nineveh. And Jonah decides, no, I'm not going to Nineveh. Let me go to Tarsus instead. So he gets on a ship and there is a storm. And finally he realizes, okay, I'm the cause of this storm. So he says, you throw me overboard, you guys will be safe. They throw him overboard. He spends his three days in the belly of a fish. After all of that, and then he prays and repents, and the fish puts him on dry ground. The most interesting thing is, it says, then again the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, go to Nineveh. He didn't get a new word. He had to pass the exam first. God will not give you a new word. God will not take you to the next level until you've passed the current level. There is an exam for the level you are on. To go to the next level, you must pass it. A lot of us have been stagnant because we have failed to pass the exam. There are certain lessons God wants you to learn and you've just refused. So you keep going round and round the same mountain. 
You fail it this time, he brings another situation. Then you fail it, then he brings another situation. Some people, it is just learning how to love people. So he keeps bringing people your way that are difficult to love. And you keep failing the exam. So he keeps bringing more people until you learn it. And so you can't get promoted until you've learned that lesson. Some people, it's faith. He keeps bringing situations and you fail this one. He brings you another situation that yet requires you to stand in faith and you still fail it and he keeps bringing them until you pass. You have to pass. There won't be people who've got to the next level in the things of God who never passed the tests. Why? Because those lessons are critical for that level. If you've not passed them, you lack the support pillars. People who go to the top having bypassed some things are the ones who fall very quickly. Because your greatest weakness will destroy your greatest desire. Your greatest weakness. The weakness you have not dealt with will destroy your dream. The weaknesses at the lower levels that you do not conquer will destroy you when you get to the top. If you've not dealt with the issue of pride and ego, if you continue upwards, when you get to the place where everyone is praising you and saying how wonderful you are and how anointed you are, it will destroy you. Because you didn't deal with it before. There is no way around these things. And those who try to skip them on their way to the next level end up being crushed back down to the place where they need to pass those things. And so you see some people who write so fast and fall down equally fast because they never passed the exams. They never passed the exams for the next level. If you want to go to the next level, you must pass the exam. Here is the other thing. No matter how high you've gone, there's always a higher level. Unless you have reached the level of God, which is not possible. No matter how high you've gone, there's always a level higher. When I was in Uganda, I preached in Pastor John's church. And God did awesome miracles. Deaf ears were opened. Devils left people. There were people who had, there was, I, I had spent a long time without operating in word of knowledge like that. God was revealing to me people's conditions. And they, and they were accurate. And who oh, I left excited. I was like, Lord. It's been a while since I experienced this. Then I went to Nigeria and I met this prophet from Ghana. Both names. He would call out people by both their names, tell them exactly what they are going through. And then pray for them and they get their miracle right there. And I said, Lord, there is always a higher level. I acknowledge that there is always a higher level. It is dangerous when we get comfortable at the level where we are. There is always a higher level. And sometimes we justify where we are by talking about diversities of giftings. There is a big difference between diversity and levels. There are levels. There are levels in these things. Hallelujah. So today, if you preach at a certain level, know that there is a higher level of preaching. You can do better. You can preach better. You can preach more effectively. 
You can sing better. You can play better. But there is effort involved. It doesn't come cheap. I thank God I can play keyboard, but there are people who play it better. That tells me there is a higher level. There is a higher level. Even in preaching. Oh yes, I know, I preach well, but there are people who preach better than me. That doesn't, I don't sit there feeling envious of them. But what it does tell me is that I can improve. I can get better. Because here is the thing. How do you know? Years ago, you improved. So what makes you think you've arrived now? You can still, if you improved from where you were then, you can improve from where you are now. But we get to a place of comfort. And that's dangerous. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Verse 6. The Lord our God spoke unto us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough in this mount. You have dwelt long enough in this mount. Come on, tell your neighbor you have dwelt. Come on, tell them you have dwelt. You have dwelt long enough <laughs> in this mount. Hallelujah. Turn you and take your journey. Oh, Sakarabro Setekai. Masakaretata. I'm excited. Hmm? A new level always requires a relocation. Come on. A new level requires a relocation. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Mm. A new level requires a relocation. You have dwelt long enough in this mount. You've been too long at the level you have been at. It is time to go to the next level. You have dwelt long enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have dwelt long enough. A new level requires relocation. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Mm. David. David had run from Saul. So he went to the land of the Philistines. And he built this nice little city called Ziklag. And he dwelt there and he used to go and raid the Amalekites and all the others and come back with booty. And it was comfortable. It was good. They had their own city. Saul was no longer chasing him. Most of us we would get comfortable and just remain there. Then Saul dies. And what happens? David picks up all his stuff and moves to Hebron. Too many of us, when the challenges of life pressed us, when things got tough, we fled to certain places and got comfortable there. Sometimes you tr you've tried this and tried the other and things didn't work out the way you expected. Some things were tough, so you retreated. And then the place that was meant to be temporary rest turned into permanent rest. You stayed there and became comfortable. You never realized that you were never called to be king of the Philistines. You were called to be king of Israel. He was not called to be king in Ziklag. He was called to be king in Jerusalem. The Bible tells us of David that when Saul was pursuing him so hard, he ran to Moab. 
That's in First Samuel, I believe it's chapter 13. And, but we, I won't read it because I want to go really fast. But what happens is, David runs to Moab, and he takes his father and mother there, and he tells the king of Moab, please keep my parents for me. And he first dwells in Moab for a bit. Then the prophet God shows up and tells him, hey, get out of here. Go back to the land of Israel. There are some of us, life chased you. Things 